Today we're going to install Frigate in a Docker container and we're going to connect that to Home Assistant via the Frigate integration. We've had a lot of requests for this and I think it's time that I show you how to do it. So let's get started. So those of you that don't know what Frigate is, Frigate is a complete local NVR designed for Home Assistant and AI object detection. It uses OpenCV and TensorFlow to perform real-time object detection locally for IP cameras. And I've been running this for a year or more and I really like it. Uh, it runs in a small footprint, uh, like a Docker container. If you're using uh, external TPU, like a Coral TPU, it works a whole lot better. Uh, it requires less CPU, so less hardware, less power, and you can run a bunch of cameras on it locally with no kind of um, fees or anything like that. So installation is what we're talking about today. Uh, it's a Docker container that can be run on any Docker host, including a Hass O add-on. Now I used to run it as a, as a Hass or Home Assistant add-on, but I got away from that because I wanted to give it a little bit more power, give it its own dedicated device so that it can run and do its thing without uh, interfering with any CPU cycles or causing delays in my home automation stuff. Now the Home Assistant add-on is not the same thing as the integration. We will still use the integration. Do uh, Frigate can run anywhere as long as Home Assistant can see it from where it's installed. And that's what we're gonna do today. It does require an MQTT broker. I'm not gonna get into that today. There's plenty of examples and other videos of my own where I talk about setting up the MQTT containers and getting all that working. All we're gonna do today is install uh, Frigate on a Today it will be on a VM. I have it running on an Optiplex, but VM for demonstration purposes today, it's best installed on bare metal Debian based distributions. It needs access to the underlying hardware for the Coral and GPU devices. Running Frigate in a VM on top of Proxmox, ESXi, virtual bots, et cetera, is not recommended. The virtualization layer often introduces a sizable amount of overhead for communication with Coral devices. Not always, but it does. I could never get my Coral TPU to talk to my VirtualBox instance on Windows 10. It just didn't work. It would show up for a couple seconds, disappear, not reliable at all. That's why I went to external hardware and I'm now running it on the Optiplex. Uh, Windows is not officially supported, but some users have had success getting it to run under WSL or VirtualBox. Again, it works great under VirtualBox. CPU only does not work very well or at all with the CPU or the uh, GPU. Okay, let me set right. Does not work that well or at all with a Coral TPU. Thank you. So uh, getting these things passed to Frigate may be difficult or impossible, et cetera, et cetera. So we're not gonna do that. So Frigate uses lo following locations for read write operations in the container. Docker volume mappings can be used to map these to any location on your host machine. So all of these talk about where things go. And then there's a common Docker compose file we're gonna run Docker Compose, which um, is a prerequisite. Make sure that you have Docker Compose installed, Docker, all of that installed on your device. If you're doing this, the assumption is you know how to work with Docker. I'm just gonna show you a high level overview of how to install this particular Docker instance or Docker container. You can also write to a local or to a network drive with database on a local drive, there's there there's various options for that. And um, some of this stuff I did not mess with, the shim size and stuff like that, I don't do anything with. So here is a sample uh, Docker Compose file complete. So I'm gonna show you the actual running Docker Compose file that I have set up to run uh, Frigate on this, in this Docker container. So let's go into Docker Compose here. And it's basically what it shows in the installation uh, direct or in the uh, installation guide under the Frigate site. Uh, you pick your version and you've got your services Frigate. Container name is whatever you want to, we'll call it Frigate. Uh, I left a lot of these things as default, such as privilege true, restart unless stopped. You wanna make sure that it's restarting on a power restart of your device or whatever, especially something like Do uh, Frigate where you have a uh, security type setup and you wanna see what's going on, that should be in the stop. This is the image that we're going to install. It's the stable AMD64. You would choose your version of the image for the device you're installing it on. The shim size is 64 megabytes. And then our devices are these here. 
Now, because I'm installing this in a VM, I'm gonna leave these all as default. So what you can do is you can pretend that you're just installing this on a bare metal piece of hardware. The only reason I'm showing it on a VM today is I don't have a bare uh, piece of hardware to install it on. Just wanna show you the process on the VM and you can apply that to your, your hard or bare metal uh, devices. Okay, so volumes. This basically takes your uh, time, your local time setting on your device and then it applies it to the Docker container so that you're looking at the right time or time zone. And then you've got your storage and configuration directories for where everything is going to go. I, I basically modified these for the local configuration or local storage area, and that's mapped to what's inside the container, the Docker container. So on my local server, because this gets a lot of people, my full path, home mostly Chris frigate, config.yml is my config.yml file on the Docker container. So it's mapped. And then my storage, home mostly Chris storage, is mapped to media frigate on the Docker container. So this is what's on my VM slash hardware. This is the side that's on the Docker container side. So this maps across when it creates the container. Type is tempfs, target is temp cache, and then here's our tempfs size. If you need to change ports, you do that right here. Uh, this is the port on your virtual machine or your hardware, your bare metal side. This is the Docker port it maps to. If you have a port conflict, you can change it. This would be 5,000, 5,000, 1935, 1935. I have something running on 5,000 already, so I've mapped it to port 5,001. When I go to 5,001 on my local machine, it maps it to port 5,000 on the Docker container for this particular frigate instance. And then your environment, you can put whatever password you wanna throw in here for your RTSP password, if you use that. Before we go any farther uh, and get out of this file, I wanna point out one thing. You need to have a configuration or config.yml file. If you don't have a config.yml file, uh, a frigate will not run because it doesn't know what to do with itself. So in this case, my frigate dot y or my config.yml file is in my home mostly Chris frigate directory. And that's where all my camera configurations are, all of my zones and my settings, everything that goes on with this frigate instance is gonna be in that file. One of the nice things about using the Docker compose file is all of your information is stored in these directories. So if you were to uh, spin up a new Docker container of frigate, and it, would, and it read all of this information right here, it would be all the settings that you already had. So if you're upgrading to another version of, of Frigate, you specify these directories with the configuration and the storage, it should all be there for you, as long as it's backwards compatible to the version. And a lot of times it is. So that's nice when you're running Docker Compose, you have the environment all set up here in a configuration file. That file doesn't ever get overwritten when you upgrade. It just takes this information and creates the Docker instance with running Frigate with this information. So we need to make sure we have a configuration file there. So I'm going to go to that directory and look at the config.yml file. Now I know I can just go cd. or vm. slash because we're already in this directory, but for demonstration purposes, home mostly Chris Frigate, which is what we specified in our uh, Docker file, and open it up. And then you have a file here with all of your information in it, all the cameras and everything else. Now I've got videos on how to do the configuration, so I'm not gonna go into detail there. The point of today's video, get it installed, get it integrated with Home Assistant, and let's go with it. Okay, so now all you have to do is spin up the Docker container with Frigate in it. So we will do a sudo docker compose up, and sudo because we need elevated privileges, and as long as you're in the directory where your uh, Docker compose file is, it will read that Docker compose file and build your container based off of that file. So you just hit enter and then it goes through. If it has to download the image and I already have it downloaded, it will download the image and spin up a container. You'll see that the container is created and here's the log files. As you go through here, you see I've got various cameras set up and this is all from the config file that I specified in the compose, the Docker compose file. CPU detectors are not recommended. That's because in this particular instance on the VM, I can't use the Coral TPU. I am just using the uh, CPU for detectors. Not recommended, 
because it uses more CPU than a TPU. But in today's world, we all know getting a Coral TPU is very hard or very expensive. You can get them, but you're going to pay twice to three times or more what they're worth. So not a lot of people have them available right now. You can use the CPU if you need to. Okay, this is up and running. There are no errors. So we now know it's going. Now, if we leave it like this and we go away, it's going to shut down the Docker, conta Docker container. So let's go ahead and control C. We will control C, which will stop the Docker container from running. And once that is finished, we will rerun it again with a dash D, which basically puts it in the background. And it'll tell you it's starting up and now it's started up. The first time run it without backgrounding it so you can see the logs, make sure it's all good. If it is, control C, start it back up with a D. Now in order to use this, we need to be able to get the information from this frigate container over to our Home Assistant instance. And the way we do that is we go over to our Home Assistant instance. And I'll be using my Home Assistant yellow in this case. I'm gonna hit C on the keyboard. I'm gonna to go to integrations. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to click on add integration right here. And I'm gonna search for uh, frigate. And it asks me for the URL to access Frigate. If you're using the plugin or the add-on, it should be this right here. Um, if not, then you need to specify where it is. In this case, we are running it on my VM. So in this case, we will use an IP address, which is the VM IP address. And remember we specified port 5001 because I already have something running on 5000 you have to specify the URL that you're running this on. And this is um, the IP address of my Home Assistant instance, or my uh, virtual machine, I'm sorry. And that's where Frigate is running. So this is probably the most important part. Get it up and running on your VM or your hard bare metal or wherever you're gonna run it, if you're not using the add-on. And then come over here and add the integration. The integration is what binds Home Assistant to the thing that you're using. The thing in this case being Frigate. Then you can click on submit. It says uh, success. And if you have a bunch of cameras already set up, it will ask you about all of the areas for those cameras. It will also ask you about zones that you have set up. And that's again, zones are things you can set up to narrow down areas within a camera's field of view. And you can specify which specific area around your house is uh, these are set up for. So you could go through here and just do all these. And then when you're done, click on finish. And then if you, if you look in here, you'll have a frigate, um, URL or frigate integration with, uh, whatever number of devices and number of entities that you have here. And here we have all of those. That might've seem, seemed a little bit overly complicated. It's hard. It's a lot easier to do than it is to explain while doing it on the video. So all you're doing is creating the Docker compose file creating a configuration.yml file for your frigate setup, and then going over to Home Assistant, adding the integration, specifying the URL where the frigate Docker container is running, along with its port, and then you have whatever, you have all of your access to frigate's cameras and events and everything in that particular integration that you just added in Home Assistant. So remember that there's also a configuration file reference on the Frigate website. This configuration file reference will take you through all of the settings that you need in order to operate Frigate. Uh, this file is also commented for every option, which means it's very easy to follow and it's very well documented. So you just go through and you pick the non-optional items. Those have to be configured. And then everything else that's optional, you can add it or not. And it talks about in this file what it is for. So it's something that a little bit more uh, complicated to set up. But once you get it going, it's well worth it in my opinion. I have a number of Frigate videos that you can watch that go through the config file and a number of other ways to set things up. I recommend if you have more questions that you watch those other videos. Got a whole playlist on it. Um, so I'll link that down below as well. Maybe even a little card up here somewhere. Let me know if you have any questions uh, about how to install Frigate in a Docker container. 
If you don't know what Docker is and you don't understand how to even get started with Docker, there's lots of tutorials on how to do that. Docker runs on most environments these days. So you can actually set up Docker and then just do the simple thing. The, the neat thing about Docker containers is you have a self-contained environment. You can upgrade, you can do a lot of stuff with it, start and stop the containers as you need them. Um, it's a fun, it's just a fun thing to play with in my opinion. I really like it. So let me know if you have any questions down below. Hit me up on Discord if you have any questions. If you're not a subscriber, please just hit that button to subscribe. In fact, I wanna see if I can just jump up the subscriber count by 10 or 20,000, just like that on this video. If you like my content, push that button. Um, just takes a second. I would really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video.